Hey everyone, welcome to Startups on Demand, sponsored by New York Tech Media. Today I've got the awesome Ori Zuckerman, the co-founder and CEO of Substrata, as my guest. Ori, thanks for being here. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the privilege. So you guys are doing, or you guys have a remarkable product. Um, uh, you guys are helping, your product, uh, Substrata, is helping deal makers close more deals and kind of understand the nonverbal signals that are happening in conversations, in emails. Uh, we haven't seen that, you know, there's a lot of cool sales tools right now, but something like Substrata, we, we haven't seen yet. Can you kind of explain to our audience, uh, first of all, about what you guys are doing and a little bit about what your intention is with the product? Yeah. Um, in, in a nutshell, we're helping deal makers become more sensitive to nuances that can make or break any deal, mostly online, of course, through email and, and Zoom calls and so on. Um, our special sauce is our ability to analyze both uh, verbal aspects of the communication, like language, and nonverbal aspects, stuff that are more behavioral. And we call ourselves a behavioral intelligence platform uh, because we take into account a lot of patterns um, uh, that are embedded in the uh, um, seller prospect um, interaction. Stuff like timing, uh, stuff like uh, um, small nuances in text, in audio, it's like your tone. Um, this, is, this is where we reside. Awesome. Um, so obviously a lot of people by now already know the other, other you know, big sales platforms like Gong or Chorus. And what you guys are doing, you guys are doing something a bit different. Um, you guys are actually not only documenting the conversations, but you guys are actually going you know, in beneath the surface and providing kind of a bigger, um, more broad uh, kind of landscape on what's going on in the conversation. What has led you to kind of think about this product and kind of where the idea, where has where this idea came from? Well, um, in my previous uh, startup, you know me, that was acquired by WeWork in 2017, uh, Gong were actually one of our customer, a customer of mine. Um, and I, I thought, I always thought that Gong's and Chorus's vision, it's great. Um, this vision of uh, trying to, you know, transform the, the art of sales into science is something that I thought was always a, a worthy goal. Um, but when I got into the details and really understood what's going on under the hood, I saw that um, they're clinging on to the face value of the language. So what happens with tools like Gone, Chorus, Exact Vision, Second Nature, uh, in essence, it's transcript dependent uh, technology. So they take a call like ours, for example, and then they record it, they transcribe it using an ASR engine, automatic speech recognition, and they get a piece of text in the end. That, that piece of text is being then uh, further cleaned up using NLP methods uh, so that the noises are out, the verbs are, are chopped to the stem, it's called stemming and limitization, and then they get this pristine piece of text and then they hook up to the CRM to find correlations between stuff that you said and results. So a common uh, tip from, from the likes of Gong would be, you know, the top deal makers in your industry, in your organization, mention a competitor more often than you or in a different place in the conversation. But that's always problematic to say such a thing because that's only the face value. That's only the text. So what was missing, in my opinion, is real meaning, true meaning, interpersonal meaning. And it's not just what things mean in context, which is semantics, it's also what it means from a social perspective, uh, like sentiment, like the power dynamics. And this is where I thought there, there was a gap, there was a void, there was a vacuum, and I decided to go ahead and, and fill that vacuum with Substrata. Awesome, and right now you guys have, um... Uh, a platform, a product that attaches to email, right? And if we look at the product roadmap, we also have something uh, with audio, in the audio setting. When is that supposed to come, come Next out? Year. Next, Next year. year. Okay, so for everyone who's listening, you can go ahead and, and test out Substrata um, 
subscribe.me and test out the product on, um, on your email. I personally use it and it has been super um, helpful. Um, and I want to take this conversation now to talk a little bit about deal making in general. So me and Yori, we had a lot of private conversations where we kind of took a stab um, and kind of talked about different leaders and famous deal makers and how their personality kind of benefits um, their deal making skills and complements it. Um, and you've kind of like, you know, from building Substana, you've become kind of like a, like an expert on, on like analyzing human behavior, especially on the deal making side. Um, what do you see um, are really strong qualities of a strong deal maker from your standpoint? Okay, so first of all, let me just correct you. I don't see myself as an expert. Okay. Um, I'm an explorer and this, this is a journey where we are applying, you know, science to, to help us really transform sales and deal making into science. So I, I'm just a person who leads a company in that field. Um, of course, I gain a lot of insight, you know, uh, um, along this journey, but I wouldn't self-proclaim to be an expert of any kind. With that being said, um, we, some insight do come out and it seems kind of clear. Uh, so to your question, like what makes a better deal maker? So there's a ton of different things um, that make up a better deal maker. Uh, and I wouldn't, I would not like to, you know, say the trivial stuff, like you got to believe in yourself, you got to believe in your product. These are, these things have been said, you know, uh, millions of times before. Um, I, I would, I would, I would stick to the stuff that we've noticed. So first of all, I think that, um, Great deal makers, um, on top of, of having the, the fascination about their industry, uh, uh, on top of really understanding their own product uh, and, and their own competitors, uh, they love research. They love to learn. So they will take time to really understand who is in front of them uh, and really think uh, deeply about how, how it is to be, you know, in their shoes, in their prospects' shoes. So this is one thing. Another thing that I think great deal makers are very savvy, very good at is understanding human dynamics. Some people understand that naturally. Some people learn to do it. Um, but they are really focused on um, understanding influence uh, and understanding how to build authority even when they don't have a lot of leverage. Uh, so this is something that we, we see very clearly. Uh, another thing that's pretty uh, clear and that was actually surprising to me is that they're not happy, happy, joy, joy kind of people necessarily. So, you know, a lot of uh, the old sales coaches uh, talk about motivation and excitement and being thrilled and being uh, having a yes kind of attitude. Uh, we see that it's not always the case. Um, sentiment, as we call it, uh, especially positive sentiment, needs to be used um, very delicately um, uh, along the process uh, because it can actually work against you. Uh, there is, there are power dynamics under the surface, and a good deal maker needs to understand how they operate and what to do in order to build the right position in order for the deal to, to, to attract the customer, basically to attract the prospect. That's super interesting. And so there's like a lot of famous books of like, you know, getting to yes. And a lot of those like famous sales motivation books. And recently, you know, there's a lot of other style of books like, you know, um, never split the difference. And, um, and I can't think of another one specifically right now. But the, they, they're a bit more, um, they talk about things that are happening beneath the surface. And when I look at like, you know, big famous deal makers and deal maker and big personalities who, who do a lot of deal making, and even people that I know personally, you're right. They're not this, you know, jolly type fellows. They're like more intense, kind of like strategic Sometimes even like they always think a few steps in advance. 
because they, you know they keep a lot of a lot of things close to their chest instead of giving them away. Um, how does someone know how to kind of build that you know nuance in themselves of being able to kind of you know on one hand be someone that is easy to talk with and the, on the and then on the other hand be a really effective deal maker? Well, that's a very interesting question. Um, I think that the principles are pretty straightforward and simple, but they take a lot of training. Uh, it's maybe it's like flying, uh, flying a, a, an aircraft uh, of some sort, F-16 or something. Um, it, the, maybe the basics are not that complicated, not that complex, but there needs, there's a lot of subtleties. Um, I think that the game of authority is something that people can understand, but it becomes so subtle sometimes uh, because everybody are playing it. So it, it's about being better at, at the ping pong. It's like tennis basically, okay? Uh, you need to know how to respond. You need to know when to respond. You need to know, you know how much power needs to be applied because if you're gonna hit too hard, it's you're gonna the, the ball's gonna <laughs> just fly out. You're gonna lose a point, and 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 deal making, you're gonna lose the deal. Um, so it's it's less about learning and more about training, and being more aware of those nuances. Uh, and sometimes it can really be surprising how to, even when you're trained, sometimes you know you forget about these things because it, it's not very. Uh, it's not the cortex. It touches more ancient parts of our brain, uh, probably. Interesting. Really fascinating stuff. Um, and in the, in the start of the conversation, you mentioned you sold your last company to WeWork, and we privately talked about that as well. And, and as you know me, I have to ask, um, you've met Adam Neumann um, a few times and you, you've actually done a deal making event with them, which we're not gonna, which we're not gonna kind of talk about, you know, the specifics here, obviously. But if you look at uh, someone like Adam Neumann and then we can talk about other big personalities, maybe like Larry Allison or Mike, Mark Benioff or any other kind of leaders in tech. Um, what do you think, um, he has specifically that works for him. He's, we've seen right now with the big, he did, you know, another big uh, deal making with Anderson Hurwitz, raising $350 million, uh, million dollars for his new uh, startup flow, which I'm excited to see what it's all about. Um, what do you think he has to his advantage in terms of deal making? Well, a lot of things. First of all, I think um, um, he really knows how to uh, create the right setup. Uh, all the stuff that happened before the meeting uh, are critical. This is essentially building the platform from which you're going to preach, so to speak, or hmm. building the stage. So he, he really knows how to build the stage. He's not just going to go out and, and pitch or go out and, and, and do the deal. There's a lot of, sometimes there's a lot of people involved too because he, he had a whole team around him. Um, but he really knows how to build the setup so that when the engagement starts, he already has a lot of, uh, of things stacked in his favor, uh, which is uh, a, a great, a good sign for, for a great deal maker. Um, on top of that, I think he has, uh, you know, the, the physical and mental traits uh, that make him a great deal maker. Um, physically, um, in a very simplistic way, he's an impressive person physically. Uh, he has a great voice, although people think the, the voice is kind of uh, crude sometimes it is, I think it's a great powerful voice. Um, I think he's using a lot of emotion um, when he speaks. So everything sounds very candid, very real. Um, and um, I think it's that combination of, of setup um, and physical nuances that give him the, the, the edge. It's less about tricks or anything. I, we didn't smell any tricks. Interesting. So it's all about like the more someone is able to authentically like get into that deal making role and really have like a vision, like you know, kind of like a a, a vision. So 
I've been I've been reading lately a lot about Mark Benioff and Larry Allison. I've been fascinated with both of these personas. For the audience that doesn't know, Mark Benioff is the co-founder, CEO of Salesforce, and Larry Allison it's his mentor. Uh, he's the CEO, uh, the co-founder and CEO of Oracle, uh, both big-time billionaires. Um, and what I've been reading about a lot about these two folks is that they they always talk about always having a vision. In every kind of situation, you always want to know what the desired outcome should look like. And you should not let your, your emotions or other people's emotions kind of uh, get you off track. Um, do you think this is, this is like a big must in filmmaking, knowing what the, your desired oh. outcome should be? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, getting emotional is basically losing control. Um, and this means that, you know, you, you can get lucky sometimes, but, uh, it's not, it's not a sure way. It's not a consistent way, um, to close deals. And it's, it's not a good way to become a good deal maker. You have to, to, there, there, there's some emotion there and there's some, you know, stuff that convey that you're, you, you feel what you feel. Uh, but getting emotional is basically letting the other party, uh, um, activate your activate you in a way that you didn't necessarily want um so i, I totally agree with this is so 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 when you said like adam neumann was talking with emotion so he was talking with emotion but he wasn't emotional while doing that is that correct exactly yeah awesome. he was talking to when he was talking about his agenda he was emotional uh because he wanted to get you know the, the maximum amount of influence i guess um but I think that in the face of resentment or in the face of, of like tough negotiations, it was actually very cool and not emotional. So mm -hmm. it was emotional when he was acting, not reacting. Love it. Love it. Um, and another, yeah. And, and another point is, I know we talked about this privately as well. So like, but I'm saying this for the audience that if you want to check out, he has an interview he did for the New York Times a few months ago where he was, he really, he really uh, showed his dominance in like in, in conversations and stuff like that. You should definitely check it out. Um, so as we're kind of like wrapping up this interview, um, I want to um, talk a little bit a, a bit more about Substata and um, exactly what kind of deal makers is the ideal um, client persona for you guys. So obviously, I can go ahead and say that you know um, I own a, a PR agency. This subside that has helped me close clients and has helped me negotiate better deals and stuff like that. Um, what other kind of personas uh, kind of are you guys targeting? To be honest, the, the the higher you go, like in the social hierarchy of deal makers, uh, the more suitable substrata is for you. Um, so it does work for you know AEs, SDRs for sure, um, but it. It's really effective for founders, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, business owners. Uh, but not only that, it's also uh, very useful for even venture capitalists who are trying to raise from limited partners, from LPs, private equity, uh, GPs, M&A teams, investment bankers. Where is dealing with a large scale, uh, high stake deals uh, that involve, you know, sometimes ego wars, interpersonal stuff, uh, waiting in the dark until you get that email back and all these sort of things. This is where Substrata shines. Um, it is less relevant in B2C uh, deal making. It's less relevant when it comes to post-sale stuff like support. Uh, High-end deal making would be the, you know, the, uh, the can't answer. Love it. Oli, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Um, love your product and the audience has to check you guys out. Uh, once again, if you guys want to check Substrata, it's substrata.me. Uh, you can check out also their LinkedIn profile. You can follow Ori on LinkedIn. Um, and yeah, thanks so much, man. Thanks for the time. Thank you, Marie. Thank you.